So over the last couple of years, Jabra has released a lot of earbuds that were a little hard to tell apart from each other. I'm not only talking about the Elite 3, 4, 5, and 7 Pro, but there are also active versions of some of those same buds. I actually told Jabra I didn't think it was such a great idea to put out so many models because it created confusion. Well, it now appears it's come to its senses, or sort of anyway. I've got the $200 Elite 8 active here in my left hand, and in my right, the flagship $250 Elite 10 but at least there will be no standard Elite 8 or an Elite 10 active. This is it, Jabra has assured me, so let's get right into what I think about them. I'm gonna start with the Elite 8 Active because they're more straightforward. They look, feel, and perform like a modestly upgraded version of the Elite 7 Pro with six microphones instead of four, slightly improved adaptive noise canceling and wind reduction technology along with a higher durability rating. If you're more interested in the Elite 10, feel free to jump ahead, but the Elite Active 8 does have some appealing features. Like the Elite 7 Series, they have a noise isolating design with the same ear tips. They fit my ears quite well, and I do like that they have physical control buttons for controlling music playback, answering and ending calls, and toggling between noise canceling and hear through transparency mode. The new charging case has rounded corners and does offer wireless charging. There are ear detection sensors that automatically pause your music when you remove a bud from your ears, and you can use a single bud in mono mode while the other charges in the case. Jobber's active earbuds have always been billed as being slightly more durable than their standard Elite counterparts, but for the Elite Active 8, Jobber has really leaned in the whole durability factor, and it's marking these as the world's toughest earbuds. They're fully waterproof and dustproof with an IP68 rating, and their charging case is dust and splash proof with an IP54 rating. Jabra also says they're drop proof and have passed nine durability tests to meet the military spec standard for ruggedized electronics. While I didn't do any extreme cold tests, I did drop them a few times on the pavement, fully submerged them in water and wore them around in 90 degree heat in the streets of New York City, and they came out no worse for the wear. If you're looking for rugged buds, that would be a key reason to buy these, but they also are lightweight at five grams each and compact sitting fairly flush with your ears. They have Jabra's Shake Grip rubber coating that gives them an added bit of grip and most people should get a very secure fit. In my tests, they worked well for running and have both adaptive noise canceling and an adjustable hear through transparency mode that lets you hear the outside world. Neither the ANC or the transparency are quite up to the level of the AirPods Pro 2 which when they're on sale, retail for about the same price, but the noise canceling seems slightly improved from the Elite 7 Pro. For both of these earbuds, Jabra has moved away from using Qualcomm chips so they don't support the Aptex audio codec for Android devices, but they do support the AAC audio codec and are also compatible with the new LE audio standard that includes the LC3 audio codec. LE audio features will supposedly be available via a firmware upgrade sometime in the future, though it's unclear exactly when. Multipoint Bluetooth pairing is available from the get-go and Android users get hands-free Google Assistant. You just have to say the wake word to access the assistant. If you get a tight seal, I think these sound very good. Equipped with six millimeter drivers, they deliver punchy bass, good clarity, and pleasant sound overall that has an open quality enhanced by Dolby's spatial sound mode that tricks your brain into thinking the sound is more outside your head. They lack a little bit of refinement and accuracy compared to even more expensive earbuds, including the Elite 10 and Sony WF-1000X Mark V, but all in all, there isn't a whole lot to complain about. You can tweak the sound a bit in the app with some preset EQ options or create your own custom EQ, and you can turn off spatial sound in the Jabra Sound Plus app. While I did feel they had some small shortcomings in their performance, particularly their voice calling performance, more on that in a minute, I did come away feeling that these were really solid earbuds overall. Battery life is rated at up to eight hours with ANC on and 14 with it off. Good numbers for sure, but ultimately their standout features are their sound design and apparent durability. The Elite 10 are a completely different set of earbuds. If they have a descendant, it's the Elite 85T, 
which also had a semi-open design. Some people really like those earbuds. I was less of a fan. Compared to the Elite 85T, the Elite 10 offer not only a more comfortable fit and better design, but also better sound and significantly better noise canceling performance, along with impressive Dolby Spatial Audio with head tracking. The Elite 10 are designed for people who don't like having ear tips jammed in their ears. You're still dealing with silicone ear tips, but they have a unique oval shape and are designed to nestle in your ears. They certainly are among the most comfortable earbuds that have silicone ear tips. Interestingly, they sometimes felt like they were sitting in my ears a little too loosely, but it actually had a more secure fit than I thought. While the Elite 8 Active have a higher durability rating, these still have an IP57 rating, which means they offer both good dust resistance and also can be fully submerged in water. In other words, you can use these for running if you get a secure enough fit, but I felt more confident that the Elite 8 Actives would stay in my ears while running with them. The Elite 10 have all the same features I just described in the Elite 8 Active, but they add head tracking for Dolby Spatial Audio and have different noise canceling technology called Jabra Advanced ANC. They also have larger 10 millimeter drivers that help deliver richer and more accurate sound than the Elite 8 Active. In a quieter environment anyway, these have sound that ranks up there with the best sounding wireless earbuds. It's clean, nicely detailed, and open with well-defined bass. These sound a little more natural than the Elite 8 Actives, particularly in the mid-range where vocals live. They just have a little more depth and texture. I was impressed with the spatial audio on these buds. It's right there with Apple spatial audio and some might argue it's even slightly better. It works with music and can enhance the listening experience with some tracks or at least give you a different listening experience, particularly those remixed with Dolby Atmos. But like with Apple spatial audio, it can enhance video watching, creating a virtual surround experience with dialogue fixed at the center of your smartphone or tablet screen. It works with both Apple and Android devices. The one issue with semi-open earbuds is they do allow some sound to leak in and that creates challenges for noise canceling performance. As I said, these do a better job than the older Elite 85T at reducing ambient sound, but I would not buy these expecting them to muffle the outside world as well as the AirPods Pro 2, Sony WF-1000X Mark V, or the Bose QuietComfort 2 earbuds. In other words, they're able to reduce ambient sound better than I thought they would, but they can only do so much and you really only get it about 50% level compared to some of those other earbuds in terms of noise canceling. Also on a side note, I did notice that the sound quality changed a bit when I switched from active noise canceling to hear through mode and off. Each mode made the earbuds sound slightly different. The Elite 10 don't have as good a battery life rating as the Elite 8 Active, but it's still not bad. They're rated for up to six hours at moderate volume levels with ANC on, compared to eight hours for the Elite 8 Active. That's about the same as what you get with the AirPods Pro 2. I'll finish by talking about the voice calling performance for both the Elite 10 and Elite Active 8. It's the one thing I was slightly disappointed with. Don't get me wrong, it's good, but with both buds now featuring six microphones and improved wind noise reduction technology, I expected a little more. Also, this is Jabra. It's done headsets for a long time and done them well. So I'm not sure what's going on, but headset performance for these was a little mixed, with callers telling me they didn't reduce background noise or pick up my voice quite as clearly as some competing models like the AirPods Pro 2. Here's a test call I recorded with the Elite 10 that gives you a sense of the call quality, though note the call is recorded via the internet, so you lose a little bit of fidelity in my voice. All right, I'm here on the test call with CNET editor John Falcone. John, I'm in the streets of New York here, very noisy environment. This really is a torture test. Uh, I've got a lot of cars going by, a little bit of wind. How do I sound overall? So I can hear you, but it gets uh, pretty difficult as the noise ramps up, and there is uh, also a lot of background noise, including uh, a whoosh during the entire call. All right, well, I'm going to keep talking a little bit so you can hear um, as more traffic's going by and see how my noise sounds. I got, got a big gust of wind there. Uh, so that is the test call. Thanks a lot, John. In the past, for earlier earbuds, Jabra has delivered firmware updates that improve voice calling performance. That will probably happen here as its engineers tweak their software algorithms. But if the voice calling performance was leveled up a bit, the Elite 10 Buds would probably be an editor's choice territory. They're still really good earbuds, not only comfortable to wear for long periods, but they also sound excellent. As always, let me know what you think in the comments section and hit me with any questions. I'm David Carney for CNET. Thanks for watching.